A couple of days ago, I came across this post on Reddit that goes something like this. I'm conflicted. I have seen some amazing add-ons like Grasswold and OpenStreetMap that make adding trees, grass, buildings and other pre-made models into your scenes, but part of me feels like that's cheating. I want to use them, but I feel like I'd be falling down a rabbit hole and not really relying on my own talent to create scenes and nice looking renders. So the guy is asking, what are your thoughts on using plugins like these or using models that other people have created, whether it be free or paid? Can you still call these creations your own and can you still take pride in your final product? When it comes to using add-ons and assets, whether it be 3D models, materials, or even animations and characters that other people have created, the way I see it is that these things were created first of all by artists like you due to the need they faced when they were doing their job, whether it be for themselves or for studios that they work for. If you are working on a big project and you don't have the necessary time to fill up scenes with the necessary assets, you will need help from other artists or you're gonna do this yourself, which is less likely for many different reasons. And one of the best things and the fastest things you can do is to go to the market and find what you need, whether it be free or paid. These 3D models or textures and materials can help you finish your projects just in time. Or you can bring some ready characters or environments to do the same thing, whether it be for video games, architectural visualization, animation, or any other field. So if you think for a moment with me, the origin was first based on a need. It doesn't mean that the artists, whether it be for video games or animation, weren't able to do that themselves. It's just it is for them for the most part a matter of time, efficiency, and sometimes monetary reasons. Like sometimes it is way easier to buy something than spending time to create it yourself or paying someone professional to do it for you. For example, you can buy a car model for about a couple of hundred dollars but at the same time, you need to pay someone thousands of dollars to create a custom model in the United States, for example. Also, sometimes it is so boring to do something manually all the time. So we need a tool that can automate the process to do it faster. Like, for example, UV unwrapping, tedious hard surface modeling, and tricky simulations that you need to set up all the time yourself. In addition to setting up cameras, rigging characters, and all these types of things. And what I am talking about becomes really clear and apparent when working under deadlines. And as we have seen over the years, the tools that third-party creators are bringing to the market are just insane. Like sometimes you wish these developers work for the software companies that are developing software such as Cinema 4D, Maya, Max, or Blender because they are so good. It is absolutely fantastic what they can do. Also, one of the most popular tools right now are the add-ons that are used for architecture, vegetation, creating natural scenes and hard surface modeling, in addition to animation, character animation, rigging, texture painting, you name it. They are great and they are doing a great job. Also, asset creators, like people who create 3D models and textures, in addition to materials and shaders and anything that artists need in general. They are doing a fantastic job and they are helping people a lot. The other side of it though, if you are a beginner, you need to learn how to use the software without any add-ons, models, or materials created by other people. Because first of all, you need to understand the fundamentals and know how to use the software. You need to know how to use the essential tools and most importantly, you need to understand the fundamentals of being a 3D artist, like how to use polygons, shapes, and nerves, and how to use the capabilities of software such as Blender or ZBrush for instance. In addition, how to do UV unwrapping and texture painting. Also, how to rig and animate characters, how to work with simple 3D dynamics, in addition to simulations, and so on and so forth. These are the essential skills you need to know as a 3D artist. And until then, you don't need to use these extra tools that may or may not cost money. But if you use them early on, it's not so great for you or for your personal growth. Because, let's just say, they teach you how to become lazy if you are still new to 3D. This is the case if you know how to use them in the first place, because they require some skill and some experience, of course. When it comes to considering the projects you created using the help of other artists, your own or not, it depends actually on how much of it you used. If you created a whole video game using some 3D models that you purchased from an online market, then I'm sure you can consider it your own game. But on the other side, for example, if you created an animation in which everything and all the models are not your own, including environments and characters and everything else, then you probably should disclose that everything is not made by you, except for the animation. 
When it comes to taking pride in your final product, I believe you can absolutely do that and be proud in what you created to a certain extent because it is art, right? After all, you did transform something into a completely new, different and unrecognizable piece of art. This requires talent, skill, determination and of course creativity. I hope this video helped answer the question. If you have something to add, you can leave it in the comment section below. Also, you can check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one.